Shalom, everybody. Shalom, everybody. It is Leon the Servant back here with another one on this Yah Blessed Day. We have a very interesting topic at hand. It's a lot of things I've been seeing going on, going around. And um, yeah, it's, it's wild out here today, family. It is wild out here. Starting to feel like that message that New Breed brung out is becoming even more and more timely ever so often. Um, but you guys know how I like to give it up. I like to have a short song or something that inspires us for the rest of the conversation. And this is actually one of my poems that I wrote, but I put an instrumental behind it. So without further ado, here you have MH. Um, let me share this real quick. Yeah, the poet. So we'll be out in y'all's terms. Man. Black women. Black men. Hear me out. Two words that tell words of modesty and honest statements that captivate the words. The image of the same we are must be crazy, others who mentally lazy to cover the semantics, elders of Rogan, Friday, the boy, and Ben, sold the lot, physical and traps, and then the boy, leaving you thirsty like aquafine, you can't get so clear, you won't make a fictitious believe it, used in body, average, branded, that's terrible, modern men feel discouraged, big town, that's the new style, under woman like on the prop, and Rowan, she a range player, you a little range. You think you can manage to find an elegant game? You'll be famous, damaged, dealing with girls at the Zaria Pros. Don't cast on my mouth, swine, cause you'll learn over time. The investment is in the They think they need DPLs, modifications to a shell. Hollow is the center, but it's covered by a charming fantasy. They must follow low key deception runs real deep in the top. I just what my girl to be low key. I don't want to have to show the fiends. I would cherish you, I could marry you. But clearly, I can't protect what is in mind. I ain't telling you to dim your shine, but I want you to glow. But they just want to show, they just want to hit and blow. I'm here for the long haul. I'm on the ball. I provide the pretty you the finesse. I don't stress. Girl, I need you, but you need me. Yes, so do that. I can't let that fly. I bear my scars and I'm gonna be a pole. I did for I'm here. Now I was ignorant. See some people in the river. Can't do. It was always me. You no matter what we go do, I can't give up on you. Cause if we do, it would never be another me and you. Fracture, I know you are still doing like your daddy was a glass maker. I could be it for you in your corner, like Sean. Man, I'll make sure you know that means. Make sure you know that means. Yeah, baby, it's something. Give me one honest shit, I'm begging, not pleading. Do you understand? I'm on my first key, and I'm still in this. Not what I'm used to do, but not with my counterpart. Don't you see? I want you to play the part. It's not too far apart from what we used to do. Man. <laughs> oh, man, that's, that's MH right there, family. Still has, I still got a little bit of working to do on that. That's why I haven't. Dropped it, dropped it like that. Um, so some mixing and mastering, but I thought it fit perfectly for this topic. Um, I thought it hit, fit perfectly for this topic. All right, shalom, shalom to everybody. Uh, Cam Israel, 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 and everyone else in the overflow that is being shy. Shalom, shalom. We, <laughs> we are here with some very interesting and pivotal information and as i look at this if i look at it and i'm like wow so this is the tools and the ways of deception that they're going to use to continue this divide what divide are you speaking of leon i'm speaking of the divide between man and woman the enmity be put between a seed um the natural love and affection being dispersed 
nowhere to be found. You like that? I don't have you like that, man. I'm still, I'm still working on it. I, I whipped, I whipped that up for you guys last night and whatnot. I was like, I gotta finish it though. Um, so man, I don't even know how to start this because this is, this is crazy. When I heard about this, uh, let me, I want to shout out uh, Courtney Johnson. Yeah, Johnson. She's the one who sent this to me on on IG. And um, originally, it was a video from Mediocre Tutorials. And I just went to the actual video because I didn't want to hear his interjections, though that was useless. Um, so this is Slicing Slow with Leon. So let's pull up the video. Let's get to slicing. Let's get to slicing. All right. One moment, family. One moment. OK. So I'm pretty sure if you um, tune into Rilo, you've heard of um, this uh, this guy named Dennis Sperling. And I mean, he's he's with that manosphere, Kevin Samuels, uh, Mediocre Tutorials. Um, and there's some other lawyer guys in there in that fold as well. Um, so knowing where he's coming from, knowing what people he associate himself with, it kind of makes you look at this information and say, yes, it's a possibility, but also understand that there is a slight prejudice that is being um, given. There's a slight, there's a bias. So as as we do here, I come with spiritual edification, with practical application, and talking about how to move forward, because this affects all men and women for that speak. All right, let's get it. Um, I just fast forward a little bit because they go on introductions and whatnot, and it's not really too important. So here we go. Was uh, on your Dennis Sperling filter channel. Right. He said it's called Don't Date Single Mothers, or you may be ordered to, order to pay child support. I said, wow, this is interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, here in the, in the mental sphere spaces, there are many reasons. Like I said, they, they are a part of that mental sphere. So we know when we're dealing with any guys that's in this sphere, they ultimately teach pump and dump. They ultimately teach um, not to respect the woman. They ultimately teach that a man who makes six figures is all that matters for there to be a valuable man. So we got to understand what basis they're coming off of. So now some of these things that it's going to be brought out, there's, there's a shred of truth, but the way that they bring it out is only corruption. You get what I'm saying? But it's, it's worth to uh, react to because this is something that has been uh, circling. This video is apparently like a year old, but it's coming back up and the surfacing again. Yeah, big shout out to Rallo. Big shout out to Rallo because he was speaking about these these cats um, yesterday, actually. It's kind of crazy. This It's like the spirit be moving. It's the spirit be moving. Uh, Salome, Crystal, get her. So let's get it. Let's get it. And this kind of speaks a lot of volumes on the the state that we are in as a nation as a community and simply just how we view each other uh, let's get it let's get it this is why guys tell people not to date child uh, women with with children and it revolves around you know being a cleanup man type of archetype right. or you know not being her first choice but you're and this is typically what they throw out um that's the typical jargon that we hear in the mental spirit. I want to focus on what Dennis Sperling brings in and his new take. And this is this is something that they're going to keep perpetuating and keep building up on um, in the next few months, years, and so on and so forth. It's they're perpetuating men going their own way, and I don't know what way that is. If you're going away from women, what you guys doing? Dealing with yourselves? I mean, make that make sense. Um, and it's it's kind of it's craziness, but I want to really cover what he has to say. So let's get to it. Ours was your, your argument is based clearly on legality, right, or purely on legality. What what do you mean by by when you say that? Well, let me say this, O'Shea. I'm not here to tell people what to do. Like I said, I give young men advice; they can use it. Like giving advice is telling what people should do. Let's not double speak here. What he means is that he's not giving people a charge or a command to do what he's saying. But giving advice is telling people what they should and shouldn't do. Advice if they want to. This is not just the young men, it's older men. 
Uh, again, I don't practice family law, but there have been some developments in the uh, in the in the family law area of, of, of law. You know, okay. think about it. Um, and it's only recent, relatively speaking. In 2015, uh, the Supreme Court addressed the same-sex marriage arguments in, in the over. And you know what's interesting, right? What's very interesting is the way that these laws took place. A lot of it has to do with the alphabet soup movement. It is crazy. It is crazy, family, how literally these people who should have normal humanitarian rights come in here and literally screw it up for you know everyone else. And they are like less than 10% of the population in America. Like make that make sense. Real talk. Um but we're going to get into how some of these laws were developed and practically how this opened up the doorways for for some of the travesties that's happening currently. Let's go. For Bill Hodges' case, basically what that case was about was about two women who were married and... Hey, wait, hold on. It was about who? Two women that were married, according to the law of the land they were married this I, and i want to point that out because it's, it's crazy it is really is it baffles me how this came up not from a regular relationship not from a heterosexual relationship not from a relationship that can bring forth life that deals with life but from a relationship that ends life from a relationship that goes against nature from a relationship that doesn't make sense and more nonsensical laws came into effect because of these unions with quotation marks. One of them wanted rights to, uh, well, actually it was about two women who were trying to get a divorce or trying to get married and was forcing the state, the different states to recognize this marriage. Of course, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of same-sex marriage, and that's how we got that ruling. Now, as a result of that, there's been some changes in uh, case law, you know, there's a case out of Michigan and it's called uh, Stankovich v. Miller. In this case, and actually, um, I got some other tabs where we're going to react to uh, this video and then we're going to go into some of these laws just to back check on some of the things he's saying, just to make sure he's not just pulling us out of the beyond. Which, um, there is some credit, or well, there's a decent amount of credit what he's saying, but as we're looking to how manipulative that this world is becoming on the woman's behalf and um, how it's coming to, to meet the man's demise in a lot of ways. Um, this is something that I do want to caution a lot of brothers. And this is something I want to speak to a lot of sisters on an aspect of, do you think that this is right or just? We might even have a little open discussion at the end. So let's get it. Right, this case came down out of the uh, appellate court of Michigan in November of 2015, shortly after the Supreme Court case. And basically what they said was uh, that, um, a, 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 this is another case where two women wanted to have custody over wow. a child. So two cases that deal with women. <laughs> I can't make this up, man. We can't make this up, family. We can't make this up. We can't. But watch how it affects other people as well. One biological mother, one a non-biological parent, but because she had spent so much time with the child, they said, well, she took on a parental role, and because of that, she's entitled to custody. Now what so practically what happened was two women got together, one of those women had a child, and because that other woman wanted to say that this is my child too when it's not, right? He's like, I have the right to raise this child as well. And I took a parental role. Therefore, it's my child also. Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense whatsoever? So, so what you're saying is that if a woman has a son, 
right? And let's just say the father is deceased, right? And a man comes and he, you know, things don't work out, right? But that man says, well, I, I did this and that for that son, so he, he's my son. See, in a lot of cases, this is a lot of, normally we look at this as positive, but what happens when it's something toxic? What happens when, let's say that new man was abusive? What happens when that new man is not a positive to the relationship or to the child? This is what those, this, this is how the law opens up these doors. You think I'm stretching? Let's keep going on. Think, no, Leon, it's not going that way. You, you're, you're digging too far into it. Let's keep going. What had already been on the books was the fact that they can make a person, uh, at that time, they used the tank language, a biological father, pay child support, uh, even if it was against his will. And so- Okay, that's something completely different. Um, <laughs> whether or not, see, and I don't think a lot of women really comprehend unless if they are doing this or or really just really they see the effects but child support literally can destroy a man i'm being completely honest it, it has the power to do that um and these these courts these judges are completely unrealistic or i wouldn't even say that they are completely biased com to uh the woman counterpart and they don't really take in the necessity to all these other things like man there are there are some men who make millions of dollars and they pay thousands of dollars like 20 30 40 thousand dollars in child support per month and it's kind of like these numbers don't really add up they don't um if you're if you're a man trying to establish yourself and make a legacy but you constantly have to give away half your paycheck to your child when your child see let's let's break this down real quick if you spend if you make about i don't know let's just say two two thousand what two thousand a week that's like a hundred thousand in a year yeah so let's say you're making two thousand a week right and you're not spending a thousand dollars on your child every single week you're just not a lot of that money goes to bills some of it goes to food some of it goes to um some of the necessities of that child granted but they say i mean there used to be an estimate about like 2018 2017 that takes about a million dollars when a child is 18 from 1 to 18 that you spend that much in a child so, um, yeah, you see, LCN, you're absolutely right. Protect your seat, vet the woman you're dealing with. You're right. But I'm talking about men who haven't even had a child because this, this is where this is going is crazy. I'm talking about simply a man being with a woman who has a child. They're trying to make him pay child support. Make that make sense. Make that make sense. I'm talking about men who have not had a child with a woman, they're trying to make them pay child support. And we're gonna get into it because I'm not I'm not making this up. And there's we got even cases and some things to review as well. So now I'm 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 sitting here contemplating like wow that's that's kind of that's a horrible situation to be in. Nah man who got a child he he and that's the woman he decided to deal with that child support that was a something that that's what happens when you deal with wicked women, more or less. And here's something else, and I'd like to share this with you, uh, O'Shea. I'm going to bring this okay. up on the yeah, uh, on the screen here, if I can. This is a post that I saw on the internet a while, uh, uh, maybe I, I guess maybe last week. If you don't think women are thinking about this, so he said his words were, "Huh? How is that even possible?" So there is some things called the epistatal doctrine, and there is another one. Um, it's a epistatal doctrine, and I forget what the other one's called. But an equitable parent doctrine. Those two doctrines together, and plus on how these things have been strengthened, 
um, especially in the last two years or so, is making it so that in anyone who plays a fatherly role, the court rules that if it affects the, it could affect the child mentally on them not being there. So that father must play child support. It don't makes it doesn't make much sense. I'm not gonna hold you. It doesn't, but this is stuff that's actually being rolled out. And this was done by the Supreme Court. And like these rules and cases he's gotta bring up, a lot of these were done by the Supreme Court. And then there's some things that the individual states have taken uh uh steps and advantages so that they could nullify these things, but it only takes one, two, or three, four cases for this go from just, I think, Michigan is where this started taking place, to go to Ohio, to go to uh, New York, to go to California, to go to Florida. Well, it's actually Florida has been changing recently from Democratic to more Republican, but to start spreading, right? And then you're only going to have real a lot of uh, conservative states that's going to try to fight against this or to at least allow it to be a even playing field, more or less. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm pro-Republican or pro-Democrat, but this is something that uh, Democrats seem to be willing to push a lot more because they support the alphabet soup. Let's keep going. Let's, let's read this post. The post says, can you make a male babysitter pay child support? It reads, I'm a single woman going to college with my sister. We're currently renting an apartment together. A couple weeks ago, I asked my neighbor, a trustworthy guy, if he could watch the kids for two hours while I went to class and my sister wasn't home and he agreed. If he babysits and does not accept pay, can I sue him for child support because he took on a fatherly role? Question mark, question mark. I'm sure I can convince a court that he accepted a fatherly role. So, and you know, this is so crazy because we have charges in the Bible that tells us, you know, look out after the fatherless, go to help the widow. But it's, some women are becoming so wicked to the point that they're going to take your kindness and make it law. Take your kindness and make it law. Take your charity and make it law. And we're going to get into it. <laughs> We're going to get into it because, yeah, this does make LCN. This does make you be like, man, I ain't helping none of them. And that's what they want. That's what they want. They want the the love from man to separate from the woman. That's what they're aiming for. You're playing into their hand. Ah, see, now I'm going to make those men. Now I'm just going to make those men only want to pump and dump. You get me? Because let's be honest, fam, when you don't want a woman or you don't want to take care of a woman, but you still have sexual desires, most men will just go into either pump and dump culture, they'll go to strip clubs, and they do all these lascivious things. Not saying that people in the chat will do that, but that's their, that's what they would do. They're more inclined to do it. They're persuaded to do it. This is craziness. Um, so I, I just read it out loud. I'm going to let him say it himself. Can you make a male babysitter pay child support? I'm a single mom going to college with my sister. We currently been in an apartment together. A couple of weeks ago, I asked my neighbor, a trustworthy guy, if he could watch the kids for two hours. While I went to class, my sister wasn't home and he agreed. If he babysits and doesn't accept pay, can I sue him for child support because he took on a father <laughs> role? I'm sure I can convince the court that he accepted the father role. So basically what I'm saying is, if you're not careful, you could get caught up in a situation where you could have a uh, a judge, a woman sue. And you know what's crazy? I think he got that off of like Reddit or uh, Quora, or Quora, Q-U-O-R-A. Which means that people are looking up and trying to see if it's possible how to legally go about it, which is concerning. It's very concerning. Even if that's only one case, let's just say that's one case in a hundred. Now, I mean, she's, she can't be the only one thinking about this. But let's go. Do you? Yes. And so the answer, her first question, can you sue him? Yes, you can sue him. Now, can you get a lawyer to sue him? That's going to be based on whether or not a lawyer feels like there's a good faith claim. But if you got something, you got that. 
And this is why I don't put my strength in the law. This is when um when I was younger, people were like, yo, you should be a lawyer. And I was like, I can't, I'm not doing this lying BS. You sit down there and you learn how to lie the best, to be honest. And it's not to offend anyone who is a lawyer, but to when you're looking at it, a lot of the times that some of these lawyers and how they operate, they look how how best they can manipulate the law to suit their client. And their client could be dead wrong. Their client could be completely immoral. But guess what? Morals and justice do not always go the same. They're not, they're not the same in this world. No, they're not the same on this land. They're just not. Let's keep going. Like over Phil Hodges case. And you couple that with the fact that uh, so he just mentioned one. He said Oakville hires case, which and for those who are unaware how this like law system works, essentially what happens is you have one law that happens, right? Or you have one case that happens. And depending on how that case goes, depends on how the more cases can go because they can be like, well, the judge ruled like this on that case, so why can't you cut some slack here? Or the judge ruled like this on that case, so why can't we do it like how that judge did it? And they kind of piggyback off of each other. Um, it builds credibility uh, to say that you're not the first one to look at the law this way or try to claim it this way. So as that happens, these cases build more and more steam to the point that it might not be the best or only interpretation of that statement or law, but because it's been ruled like that previously, then it's much more likely to happen in the future, especially if uh, the lawyers are studied up on what's going on and what's happening around them. Um, so, yeah. That you got this case out of Michigan. And I'm, I posted this up too, O'Shea, if you can allow it, because I want the people to see the language. This is what the court said in that in that November 2015 case. This court stated that given its recognition that a person was not the biological father of a child. All right, so look, the equitable parent doctrine, right? This is one, this is one of those doctrines. Let's, let's read it real quick. It says, um, an equitable parent and find that a husband who is not, I repeat, not the biological father of a child born or conceived during the marriage may be considered a natural father of that child. So wait, hold on, let's, let's review it one more time. A husband who is not the biological father of a child born or conceived during the marriage so what it's saying is that this, this woman went out and cheated or whatever happened, right? And if it's happening during a marriage, and let's say the father was unaware of this information and raised um, this child, this child, this father can now be under the law, be considered a natural father. Well, let's look into some of the sticky uh, and how this gets really sticky later. So the husband and the child mutually acknowledge a relationship as father and child, and the mother of the child has cooperated in the development of such relationship over a period of time prior to the filing of the complaint of divorce. The husband desires to have the rights afforded to a parent, and the husband is willing to take on the responsibility of paying child support. See, right now it's all willingness, right? But they've done, they have already done it previously that they have forced a man to pay child support when he was not the biological father. Let's get into it. Let's keep building. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. And essentially what this uh, this court case did was that they said that, well, he does, since he's paying child support, the natural father, not the biological, the natural, how they said it, um, then he should also have rights to... Um, for custody and parent time, right? So they're saying, well, if you're paying for the child, you can at least see the child. That's what essentially is being stated here. Um, and we're going to get into the next the next little segment uh, where it gets a little crazier. Let's keep going. Though. May be considered a parent against his will. Which Ooh. So at the bottom, it says the state that given its recognition that a person who is not the biological father of a child 
may be considered a parent against his will and consent, uh, consequently burdened with the responsibilities of the support for the child. What? What's going on here, Emma? What did I just read? <laughs> what did I just read? I'm over here like, man. Let's 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 get some scriptures out real quick, man. Cause I don't think I don't think y'all are seeing how I'm seeing it real quick. Let's go to Isaiah three and twelve, and it reads: As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, that which led thee caused thee to error, and and destroy the way of thy paths. Let's break this down. I know I've I've visited this scripture beforehand. But I think it's it speaks volumes. It says, children are their oppressors. Children are the ones weighing them down. Saying it's like child support and tr treating the children even right. They're trying to make it so that you're obligated to. And then it says women rule over them. Well, women are the ones who's taking these guys to court and to this judicial system and saying, nah, he owes me that. He owes me that. It says, oh, my people, that which lead thee. Who's leading them? The women, and they're being oppressed by the children. Cause thee to error, and destroy the way of thy paths. Man, it's kind of like, well, it's damn if you do, damn if you don't. Because now with this, the child support, right? You know how many heartaches men go through with that? You know how many nuances that actually come into that equation? I mean, um, Brother Newbury did a, a great live about that. It was um, a few months back. And he, he spoke on it. Like, there is a lot of heartache that really goes into paying child support and the unjust dues that you're paid. Bro, it's, it's practically almost impossible to live off of the way that they orchestrate that system. Shalom, shalom, cool gents. It's crazy. And I'm over here looking at it. I'm like, they are trying to cause that divide. Why you, why you keep saying they're trying to cause a divide, Leon? Let's, let's go. Um, Let's go here real quick. Let's go to Matthew 24 and 12. And it says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Do y'all think what she's doing is just, right, morally sound at all? You know, it says, um, let me see, where is that at? Uh, give me one second, family. Let me find this other scripture. I think it's right here. Let me, let me pull it up for you guys. Yep, it's the very next one. It says that uh, adulterous woman. Let me bring it up. Proverbs 30 and 20. It says, such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I've done known wickedness. None. Like, how can you foster and tell a lie to a man oh yeah this is your child and then later he finds out it's not and then you say well since you started you got to continue by the law what after you dare to lie you're forced now. This is you're trapped here. I'm telling you, man. They they're working to bring these prophecies to truth. They're work. You some women wonder why seven or seven women is going to cleave onto one man. It's because most men they're going to see these things and see these chicks and they're like, mm, I love y'all, but if I if I do anything legally, I could be held against my will to give you guys money that I don't see fit. Y'all forcing charity. Man, let's let's keep going. 
And listen, listen to this scripture real quick, family. This is Micah 2, 1 through 5. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Ooh. Say beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. It's in the power of their hand. The, the system is currently empowering women to take decent brothers to court by doing nice gestures for their children. We understand, we as men understand, man, it's, it's not great not having a, a, a fatherly figure or role model around. It sucks. There's a lot of things that you can get yourself into that you, you shouldn't. So you know what? I see this kid. Let me help him out. Or you get with a woman and she says she has a child, and you're like, it doesn't, it doesn't mind. You still would take on that woman. Let's say that let's say the father deceased. So let's just say she she wasn't just out here whoring around. Let's say the father is deceased. And you take that child and you're like, you know what? Since I'm dealing with the mother, I should help this child as well. And you know, things don't go out well with the mother. She winds up either being crazy or y'all just don't get along for X, Y, and Z, right? It could be literally a month. You guys could have never slept. Think about this. Y'all could have never had sex. But because that child looked up to you and saw inspiration into you, that she can legally now sue you and say, no, you're the natural father now. Or because... Um, she was just a friend. Let's say you never even got into a relationship with her. She was just a friend. And you saw her child. And you helped out her child. You know, you, you instructed her child. And you was like a father figure. Now they're trying to make it so that she could take you to court. And make you pay money. Like, I don't, I don't. This is a real tough place that I'm finding us men in right now. A real tough place. A rock in the hard place. And in my um the song that I played at the beginning, I said, you're my counterpart. I'm not with tussling with you. I'm not into that. But this system is really trying to make it that we have to tussle with you guys. And you ladies, I mean, because I'm speaking for the guys. Let's keep reading. <clears throat> and they covet fields and take them by violence. All that money you make it. You know, you're stacking your bread, you're getting your house right. And houses and take them away. So they oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. It's crazy. Therefore, thus saith Yah, behold, against this family do I devise evil, from which you shall not remove your necks, neither shall you go haughtily, for this time is evil. In the day, in that day, shall one take up a parable against you, said, uh, against you, and lament with a doubtful limitation, and say, We've been utterly spoiled. He have charged the portion of my people. How hath he removed it from me? Turning away, he have divided our fields. Therefore, thou shalt have none that shall cast a cord by a lot in the congregation of Yah. Wow. Wow. Oh, goodness gracious, man. All right, let's go back to the video real quick. Let's, uh, we're going to watch a little bit more of it, and then we're going to expound upon some of these laws, and we're going to speak some more about some scriptures. Which means even if you fuss and cry, that ain't not my child. That's not, you know that's not my child. I don't want to be fair. It's not that he even volunteered to say, I'm the daddy, call me daddy, call me. No, not like the case in, in, in 
And what he's saying about this whole, um, this natural father's ordeal, but this case right here that he's bringing out in particular, um, you don't even have to claim that you are the father, dad, or anything like that, just by being a fatherly figure. And that's why I'm saying it like that. Um, let's keep going. In, 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 in Stankovich's case, they're, they're referring to another case that happened back in 1996. Against this will, they made this, this guy be the dad. Consequently, and then consequently, they burdened him with the responsibility of paying child support. Such a Jeez. Did y'all hear that? That's why I'm saying what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not bad. I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. Um, this is this is this is wild. This is wild. Um, you know what? Mm. Yeah, we're gonna keep playing this. We're gonna, we're gonna play a little bit longer. Person, such a person being treated as a parent may also seek rights of custody or parenting. So basically, they're saying, yeah, you know, before you know, we can make somebody be the father against their will. That wasn't a problem. And we were burdened with child support. But it was kind of up in the air whether or not we could give this non-biological parent permission to spend time with this child. But now <laughs> they was like, you know what, you're already taking care of it. Why not? Why not? Let's get let's give you some rights to see the child, you know, see your investment. Now, since uh the equitable parent doctrine has been strengthened by the Overville Hodges case out of the Supreme Court of the United States, yeah, we'll go. So the equitable parent doctrine, we're going to talk about that. It's been strengthened by more recent cases. Yo, his words, well, I'm, bro, I'm practically speechless, man. I'm practically speechless, like, because I see, I see the agendas that are being played. I see the agenda. They're making every single mother the enemy. Every single one of them. No matter what has happened to her in the past, no matter how she got that child, no matter there is no sense of no sense of love whatsoever. Because stuff like this makes you be like, you got a child, gone. And to say that none of these women deserve a righteous man because they had a child beforehand, I can't get behind that. I really can't. Now, to say that you're supposed to be wifing up every single mother out there, I'm not saying that either. I'm not. Don't try to overgeneralize what I'm saying, but the way that they're approaching this is to make you generalize and say that every single mother is an enemy. Yep, Hosea 4 and 6, my people perish for lack of knowledge, and this is why I'm bringing it here, so that men know and women, if this was even a thought process, stop. If you want to be judged for your wickedness, go ahead. But this is some things that some women think this is even right. And it's crazy because, I, like I said, the doorway to this was homosexuality laws. That's what opened the door to 99% of these, 99% of these cases. And then they tried to start imposing this on heterosexual families. Trying to stay calm. Go ahead and let them have parenting time too. So what does this mean for the average brother who's hanging out with a single mom? What it means is if she can get someone to write a letter, someone to come testify that, uh, you know, he took my child to school. He picked my child up from school. He 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 paid for my child's clothing. He took my child to the doctor. He paid. Bro, and to take your child to school, man, as simple as that. As simple as taking her child to school. More than once, I would presume, but he's he's not really specifying how how much of a fatherly role you have to play. Man, this is, and it's crazy because guess what, family? It's right around that time. It says summertime. It's hot girl summertime. Yeah, they getting their body right. We just had New Breed doing that video about how women were trying to 
get rid of their children the way that they were going to devise it. Well, hey, what about those women that was in that video that said, man, you're like eight months too late. I already got my, my child, right? Oh, well, you know what? Let me use my body real quick. Let me let me get one of these beta men or just a decent guy because it doesn't even just go to beta men. It doesn't just go to beta men. It's like I really want to point out that this could literally happen to any guy just being remotely kind. And let me trap him up. You know, that's that's a that's my rent right there. And then I'm gonna have him pay this much, and I'm gonna have him to pay. How many fatherly roles can there be? Because it doesn't seem I don't know there's a damn limit if it's not going, if it's not even just a biological father. So what happens with like family? Let me entertain this thought process real quick. So let's say mother and father split up. The father is still around, right? Watches the child, he pays child support. The new guy who's like the stepdad, he's around the mother. He plays a fatherly role. Let's say they break up. Can she still sue that other guy for child support? The guy that's not even the biological father. Can she sue him for child support? He played the natural father role. I mean, they they're they're going they're allowing two fathers. See, that's the thing. It doesn't just go for women, right? So it, it started with two female women, and she wanted the right to say that that child was hers and divide time and was willing to pay child support. So let's go on the other, let's go on the male side, right? And like, <laughs> so let's apply it. So maybe two men can pay child support for one cat, one child. I mean, it's not a stretch anymore. Let me read some of these chats real quick. Cool gents posted uh, Jeremiah 31 and 22, which reads, how long will you uh, glad about, how long would you glad about OU backsliding daughter? For Yah has created a new thing in this earth. A woman shall encompass a man. Sheesh. I'm going, um, I'm going to get on a millennial, um, millennial woman because they are the ones who brought into the whore culture out of any of the previous generations. You know, it's millennial women's fault too, but um, it's crazy because some of the older women are endorsing what the, the younger woman doing. Uh, I forgot what her name was, but she backed Meg the Stallion. She was like on, on the, uh, the board for Negro woman image. I forgot what her name was, but she's like 80 years old. You get me? So I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, do as your heart can, is content, but it's like this millennial generation and I'm my, take my generation and whatever generation you want to put on it is being backed by the other generations. It's a vicious cycle that's going on that I'm noticing. Um, uh, this is how people get stuck on this uh, immaculate, immaculate deception thinking they can do it all, um, do it all by themselves, and choose who the dad is according to their feelings. <laughs> bro, you want to know what's interesting, bro? You know how how many how many of y'all watch Maury, right? <laughs> bro, how many of y'all have watched Maury? Real talk, real talk, and. That fire was like, nah, that's not my the DNA. They ready for the DNA test because they not finna happen. You know what? Let's let's take this down, bro. Because this this about to get crazy. Let me let me let me let me show you how deep this rabbit hole really goes, family. So we are going to read. Let's share this real quick. <clears throat> We're going to do some reading. Reading is fundamental for growth. Yes, it is. Yes, indeed. This is is fundamental to growth. So. Let's read paternity, estoppel, and fraud. Right? Let's let's do some real reading here, family. We're going to do some reading. Ah, man, I think this is pretty short, so families built bear with me. What? Let me make sure this is popping up big enough for y'all to see it. All right, cool. Cool. What is the law of paternity in Pennsylvania? Now, let's hit a little close home. <laughs> I ain't got a cat because I live in Pennsylvania. But just in general, uh, this is this is not solely for Pennsylvania. This is the doctrines that are, are explained at the top: paternity, episodal, and fraud. 
Um, traditionally, the courts have long held that there is a presumption of patern paternity if a child was born to a married couple. The husband was presumed to be the father and DNA tests that suggested otherwise were irrelevant. So if a woman went out and been a harlot, well, they still assumed that the father that was, or the husband was the father, right? And they said DNA tests were irrelevant. Recent law, however, has eroded the presumption of paternity. Many believe it is inequitable to hold a man responsible for the, the support of a child when it is clear to all that the child is not his biological child. The courts recently all but abolished the presumption's uh, legitimacy by holding that it is that it now only applies if there is an intact family at the time the presumption is raised. So what they're saying is that okay, if the family is separated, she can't hold them. But if the presumption is made while they're still together, so essentially, if she puts you on child support and it's not your child. Why you guys are together? Well, then it gets real sticky. <laughs> it gets real sticky. Or these claims that uh, that other what was his name that Dennis Sperling was making, right? They get they get real sticky because you like, well, I got the evidence that he did do this, 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 and this, right? So we're going to jump. We're going to read a few more sentences and we're going to jump down which essentially eliminates the presumption of paternity. The presumption is not raised when the family is intact as the action of the child support can lie only when the parents are separated. If a child is born out of wedlock, there is no presumption of paternity. All right. Uh, all right. So now here's when things get interesting. Paternity by estoppel or estoppel, estoppel is the doctrine that a man can be held liable for the support of a minor child even though a DNA test may execute him as the biological father. So it means he's not the father. The basis for this doctrine is that if the man held a child out as his own and the child believes that he is the father, it will be unfair to the child to be then told that the man he believed to be his father is in fact not his father. What? <laughs> oh, because it, it might hurt the child's feelings because the mother either lied to him or because the mother and the guy don't get along. Me, 12 men ain't nobody that she's hold on. Let's look at let's see. Yeah, here's what is what hitting us on Murray Loki. A message saying Esau telling you who the dad is. Low, you mean to tell me 12 men ain't nobody the baby daddy? Yeah, that is interesting. That is very, very interesting. Like, how uh, I mean, our women have 12 different candidates, and you telling me none of them, not one of them, is uh, the father. Bro, I quit. <laughs> Walk. <laughs> Bro, I, I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up, family. This this lawyer, even though he's on the, the black man of spirit side and he, he preaches on that side and that's what the, those are the cats he's in, I don't want you guys to be ensnared by the traps of modern society, ensnared by the traps of the devil. A lot of these women aren't righteous. And some of them will have the audacity to put this on you. They, <laughs> this place is, here is done. Yeah, it's, it's, it's finito, man. I don't, man. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right. Um, they say it's unfair. The doctrine of paternity by Esado is merely the legal determination that because of a person's conduct, e.g., holding out the child as his own or supporting the child, that person, regardless of his true biological status, will not be permitted to deny parentage, nor will the child's mother who has participated in this conduct be permitted to sue a third party for support, claiming that the child, the third party is the true father. Does the doctrine is aimed at achieving Fairness. How? How can this be fair? How can it be fair to to lock a to lock up a brother 
for a child that's not even his. For a child that's not even his. Because that is actually one of the things that can happen when you don't pay child support, family. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know why you will lock someone up who's not able to pay because then that means they're on behind back. But you could do you could do time because you don't pay child support. And now you're telling me you could do time for not paying child support for a child that's not yours. Wow. Wow. That's a... Uh, I'm gonna read a little bit more of this this rhetoric. Uh, the the aim is to achieve the fairness between the parents by holding both mother, that's not the father, men to the prior conduct <laughs> regarding the paternity of the child. Wow, wow, and you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? Women used to get women would be offended when you say, "Nah, I want a DNA test," right? And I understand how it can be offensive because it said it alludes to that you want you think that the woman is being promiscuous, right? Um, before you just claim that child is yours. Which that's I mean, you think that a woman to be promiscuous and you still dealing with that woman, that's a whole issue within itself. But now it's it's like to be honest, woman, to give that man a piece of peace of mind. You probably should let him get a DNA test. At least he knows that, hey, if this goes sour, I know for a fact that is my child. On top of that, they would take a man's driver's license away. Yeah, it's crazy because then, like, how, how are you going to get to work if you don't have your driver's license? Make that make sense. Make that make sense. All right, we got, we got some more things to read, too, because, you know, I like to have multiple cases. I like to have multiple cases. I like to make sure that it's not just one thing. Um, that other one I was reading from, it was um. So let me let me show this real quick. So this was a PDF file, um, Family Law by Julia A. Uh, Are you batch, right? Um, which that's that's where I got that one source from. And here we go. Um, now we're going to go to the next source, right? Now this one right here is. Uh, King Clo Law. This is family law, right? Uh, my bad, family. I don't know why I did that. Let's go back. There you go. This is law. Non-biological father determined to be the legal father. A case of paternity by epistop. See, this is not, it's not the only case. It's not the only case. It's not just one person saying this. This is an actual doctrine that's being passed on. And we're just going to read some highlights to it because then I want to get to, um, the equitable parent doctrine. I want to talk about that as well. All right. In the case, a man and woman lived together with a woman's daughter for approximately 12 years since the child was a baby. Although he knew he was not the biological father, the man held himself out as a child's father, supported the child financially, and claimed the child as a dependent on many of his tax returns. See, now this right here, I can understand. As far as his brother went, I, I guess I can I can hypothesize on why because you know you claim this child as um your dependent like legally you claim us as your dependent you, you claim them for taxes um and doing all these other legal things then okay that might make some sense to a certain degree because you've been supporting this child point blank period and been using the, the government to make sure that you know that you're supporting this child that's what report is like okay well if you want we want that far well you kind of already set yourself up to be supporting this child that you know is not yours right um and practically and then you know the, the, the person was called dad or daddy by by the child so makes some it makes more sense now, according to the opinion, the court determined that the child suffered a serious adverse emotional impact when the man broke up with the mother and ceased contact with her. The court also concluded that it was in the child's best interest to apply the paternity bias episodal doctrine against the man and require the man to pay child support. A temporary child support order was entered. The sole question in the appeal was whether the trial court 
abused its discretion in concluding that the man owed a duty of support under the paternity by episodal doctrine. Even, hey, even they're like, well, I don't know, man. I don't know if he really fits under all these things. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I understand that he did this and he did that, but whatever happened between him and the mother, now things went sour. You know? All right. <laughs> yeah, these, these these are some scriptures that <laughs> your, your pastor won't say. <laughs> Unless you go into like Pastor Dow or, or someone along those who is going to keep it a buck fifty with you. Um, but your modern pastors that you find those in those pill pits, I I ain't hear one of them talk about this. I ain't gonna hold you. They over here telling you that you gotta give your last dollar to the church. You don't got money to spend on your children. <laughs> or your children that's not even your children. <laughs> All right, let's keep getting it though. Um all right, so now we're going to talk about the equitable parent doctrine may be asserted by married same-sex spouses. See, it, it starts with the same sex just to, to build tolerance. It starts with just to build tolerance. But if this is the same, like we've already seen that in one case they tried to apply it to a heterosexual couple, right? The equitable parent doctrine allows a spouse who is not a biological parent of his or her spouse's child, but who has raised and formed a bond with the child to be treated as a parent after a divorce. When it comes to, for example, visitation rights, if he or she desires to be treated as such and is willing to pay child support. See, the right here, the, court, the, the crazy part is if they desire it. But I just showed you and the lawyer just went over a case that the man did not desire and it was still held up to him because guess what this law system is heavily slated to the woman's benefit it's true it's very true not saying you can't fight it but it's not always easy because of how these things are positioned um and it's it's getting way way out of hand it's getting way out of hand uh, and then I have just one more. I'm, I'm just going to share share with you guys. It's a law of, I don't know how to pronounce, pronounce some of these some of these places and their law of firms and what have you. Uh, but this is back in 2012, and it talks about in a paternity by episodic situation, a man who is not the biological father of a child can be forced to pay child support. All right, this is heavily and well documented, right? Um. And that's kind of what I wanted to share on that aspect on that behalf. Now, I want to add balance to this because a lot of people are like, yeah, screw those single mothers and yada, 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 and hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Why Leon has been saying this is a trap? Why has he been saying that the whole time? Why has Leon said this is to cause men not to love women? Why does it, <laughs> oh man, why why does it seem like that? His way is real funny. <laughs> All right, let, let's go over some scriptures real quick. Let's go over some scriptures because they are trying to make it that men don't want to look after the fatherless. They're trying to make it that men don't want to look after the widow. Now, this is not a, a a law by the fact that you must, but in the aspect you should help out these people. But when they try to do this and try to do it quantifiable by a law, this is when things get a little out of hand. So let's go to some of these scriptures real quick because this is a lot of balance that I don't see a lot of people bring. We're going to go to Ecclesiasticus 4 and 10 real quick. It says, Be a father unto the fatherless. And instead of a husband onto the mother. Wow, this is Ecclesiasticus 4 and 10. So shall thou be a son of the most high, and he shall love thee more than thy mother doeth. That's very interesting. Uh yeah, but y'all like the law, right? Y'all like the law. Y'all like the law. All right, let's go. 
Let's go to Exodus 22, 22 through 24. You shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If thou afflict them in any wise, and they cry at all unto me, I surely will hear their cry. And my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. Wow. Wow. This is some strong statements being said right here. Once again, I'm saying this for balance. Psalms 68 and 5. A father of the fathers and judge of the widow is God in his holy habitation. Psalms 10 and 14. Thou hast seen it, for thou beholdest mischief and spite. To requite it with thy hand, the poor committeth himself unto thee. Thou art a helper of the fatherless. Psalms 10 and 18, to judge the fathers and oppressed, that the man of the earth may no more oppress. Uh, let me see. Uh, and those are, I think, the verses I had. I thought I had a little bit more. Yeah. But those are the verses that I had. Which to just add some balance. Just to add some balance, you know. Because... No, bro. If we see we see children that's going astray, we should want to help them. We really should. Because we know what it's like for men to grow up without a, a fatherly role. We've seen it. We've seen the travesties it does in our communities. And essentially, for brothers who do it on a righteous note, right? If that sister, by any time, point, gets um, pulled by a wicked spirit, right? Let's say you make her mad by something you told her her son, which is 100% the truth, right? Um, then she could hit you and legally make you bound financially to pay that child. But the scriptures are very clear that we are not just to forsake these people, the downtrodden, but to help them. But how do you help them in a land of Babylon who was trying to make them your shackles and chains? Now, this is why I said that this is a very sticky situation for righteous men. You know, and this it can go as crazy as far as this. I say for men who have lost their father. Let's take me, for example. I lost him at nine. I see brothers like New Breed, right? And I was like, man, I, I look up to New Breed and da 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 da. Wait, is that the now? Can my mother sue New Breed and make him pay child support? This is how crazy that is. Him inspiring young men and helping the young men now. Now that's the basis for child support. That's foolishness. Or. I go to school and there's certain teachers that I look up to. They help me out. Uh, um, let's say coaches for athletes, right? They take on a natural father role. They look after these children, or at least good, the, good to, the good coaches do. That doesn't make any sense. But this will make men stop doing those things because they're like, oh no, the law. You get me? And this is this really has me puzzled. Uh, it has me puzzled. It really does. All right. <laughs> Let's see what's going on with the chat real quick. Uh, Shalom. Oh, man. I'm about to mess it up. <laughs> uh, Chael, for real. Uh, Heaven, uh, Heaven Sent. Um, Steve Bless. Steve Bless asks, uh, do you know about Chino Jennings? Yeah, I heard about him. I watched, I, I've seen some of his things in the past. I don't advocately follow him like that, though. Um, Israel Israel said, man, as you see, they trick with reverse psychology. Now you're going to have men that don't want to be father figures to no child they accept their own. Exactly. Uh, that's the issue. That is the issue, man. 
that is huge and it hurts it hurts my heart because man i i know what it's like to grow up with an absence of a father figure you get me and thank the most high that you know he, he's been a father unto me and showing me these things and help me grow and prosper and become a righteous man but man to say that now there's things not just spiritually in place legally in place that's going to try to inhibit that that's crazy man that is crazy um righteous woman not going to take advantage of a man helping them and their children that's absolutely true a righteous woman wouldn't do that you know i was i was more or less speaking on, on the the woman that you know she's 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 working her way but then she has that negative energy talking in her ear and then let's say for instance something that that righteous man said that kind of just you know she took some it took some time for her to digest but she didn't let it digest and she took advantage or she listened to the beguiling spirit that's what I said. That might be an issue. Now, I'm not. I'm not trying to say that women are that weak to always take to 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 fall susceptible to these things. But that's a spiritual dynamic now that's imposed that can be in the physical. And it's, it's scary. And it's very scary. Um. But I don't say any of this information to discourage men from having children. I don't say any of this information to discourage women for looking for a righteous man. Right? I don't say that at all. All I'm saying is now we have more obstacles to overcome. All I'm saying is now that there's more things that's being put in place that's trying to stop our growth. I'm saying that this spiritual awakening is taking hold so strong that they are trying to find ways to stifle the community. The most high, you're not going to be moving like uh you're gonna be moving like a door of Zion. Be be somewhere counting your blessings for real. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Let's see what else is going on. On who they date and know when to Justice Burns, yeah. Every I think everyone needs to be careful on who they date and know when to leave a person alone. Absolutely. All right. I did my little spiel. Um, I'm gonna open up the chat because I, I think this is this is crazy. <laughs> when I heard this, when I saw this title, I was like, "Nah, you know what? They're just gonna they're just gonna try to say this just to uh, cause division." You know, what I mean, they're gonna try to just find random stuff and make it happen. But I'm over here and I'm realizing I'm like, "No, no, there are some actual issues that can come from this, and um, it makes it even a little bit." more uh, tumultuous for the righteous. Makes it more tumultuous for the righteous. I definitely see that. I definitely see it. And now that this strengthens their philosophy of pumping and dumping, this strengthens this philosophy of never getting, never developing a, a bond with a woman, this strengthens their philosophy of men going their own way. And I don't know where these men are headed. I really don't. <laughs> I really don't. Unless they're trying to do the Roman embrace, which that is lascivious in all matters, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you guys, and I'm not gonna humor you with it. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna open up the panel. If anyone wants to speak on what what I've been saying, y'all have any advice to women or men, respectively, uh, on dealing or to overcoming these these um, these times that we're in, you know. All I ask is that when you, if you come up, come with balance, come with solutions, don't come with more problems. Um, that's it. Anyone has questions on this new dynamic? Um, feel free to shoot. Feel free to shoot, man. This is, <laughs> I'll take it back, man. I'll take it back. I really am. I really am. I really, really am like, wow, this is where we're coming to. This is where we're coming to. 
<laughs> man, it's crazy because I was looking this up last night, getting everything together for it, and I'm like, wow, no, 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 no. This is law. <laughs> these third cases and just having a, a small understanding of how some of these cases can develop and work and grow, which um, that video that I, I shared with you, he, he goes on, he elaborates on what I was saying essentially how one case over in Michigan and there's another case over in New York and then there's another case over in California and then lo and behold it's practically they accept the practice Man. wow mm -mm -mm. this is what we're coming to family this is what it's coming to what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Inmates on the way out. That's what I'm going to do. Right. My society is the trash. <laughs> for real. My society is trash, right? Like, for real. Creating our own community seems like the only way out. Depart from her. Depart from her, my people. All right. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share MH. And for those who didn't hear on the intro, you get to hear it in the outro. Look at that. Right. And um, this is my poem that I did. This one has a little instrumental in the background. I'm still tweaking a few things before um, I release it. So sneak up. Uh, you got it. Uh, you got it. Don't even stress. Young nap, baby. Leo the poet. A warrior on y'all's terms, man. Black woman, black man. Hey, man. Hear me out. Hear me out. Two words that suffer the modest and honest statements that captivate the words. He gave me the image of a savior. I must be crazy. Others too mentally lazy to cover the semantics. Elders are broken, fractured. The woman been sold a lot. Physical and traps have been employed. Even the thirsty like aquafina. You can't get so green. The woman of fictitious believers. She's embodied average. Branded as terrible. Modern men. Don't discourage me. Big town, that's the new style. Hunt a woman like on a crowd. And why would she arrange? Player, you a little bit of range. You think you can manage to find an elegant thing to win? Fans damage dealing with girls at the Zarya Pros or Castle amongst swine. Cause you'll learn over time the investment is entrapping. They think they need DBLs of modifications to a shell. Holler is the center, but it's coming by a charm and fantasy. Wait, must follow the lowly deception runs real deep in the top. I just want my girl to be low key. I don't want to have to share with the feet. I would share with you, I could marry you, but clearly I can't protect what is in mine. I ain't telling you to dim your shot, but I want you to glow. But they just want the show, they just want to hit and go. I'm here for long, I'm a lover, I provide the for the finesse. I Girl, I need you, but do you really need me? You believe that so cool that I can't let that fly. I bear my scars and all on the pole. I did for our here. Now I was ignorant. See some of my ability to do. And you, it was always me and you, no matter what we go through. I can't give up on you, cause if we do, it would never be another me and you. Fracture, I know you're seeing through you like your daddy was a glass maker. I could be it for you in your corner, like a charm, man. I want to make sure you know what that means. Make sure you know what that means. <laughs> yeah. Baby, it's time. Give me one honest shit, I'm begging not to be the do you understand? I'm on my first knee and not selling is not what I'm used to do. When I put my counterpart, don't you see? I want you to play the part, sound too good, part from what we used to Hey, that's image, man. I'm trying something out, trying something, something new, mixing a few things up, mixing a few things up. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna I keep adding lights to some of my older poems, and I'm gonna keep making new poems for you guys. I got some um, cooked up for you guys from um, the poetry night that we had. Was it last night? I think it was last night. If not, it was the other night. Um, and I said, y'all want a part two to this conversation? Yeah, throw some flames in it. If y'all really want a part two for this conversation, if y'all really want a part two on modern day since slicing this slow, want, want Leon's reactions onto modern dating and things that we definitely are seeing with a, a real balanced approach. Y'all really like that? All right, cool, cool. I'm not gonna hold you. I'll be over here. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be over here trying to whip some things up, man. I'll be over here trying to whip some things up. Okay, I don't even know why I said flames because now I don't know if y'all was talking about the chat. I don't know if y'all wanted another video or did y'all just like the song. <laughs> I didn't even think about that, but um, a panel portion, definitely panel portion. I mean, we could, we could definitely work something out like that. We could work something out like that. Um, man. I'm trying to think what day I want to do that. I keep y'all posted. I wish I had like a community board because then I could just post it on community board for a day that works for a lot of the people. But um, I keep you guys posted on open discussion. Um. And with that being said, family, stay safe because it's dangerous. It's real life is dangerous out here for men and women. You know, while the man not wanting to deal with the woman, this makes more women more vulnerable. This leaves more women raising children without uh, true masculinity in the household, which can really screw up their children. Right? And then for men, it kind of puts them in a state that they're going to keep practicing more and more lasciviousness. So it's dangerous for both parties. Both parties are being hurt and destroyed by this modern system. And I just wanted to come here with that real quick. And there will be a part two. I'll make a part two. Uh, with that being said, shalom and peace.